This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for the Intentionality Gurus with Candace Pollock. And our topic today um, is one that I can really, really relate to, and I think many of you out there probably can too. And the title is Tolerating Versus Embracing Challenges. And, you know, Candace, one of the things that I really have, I guess I always knew, but I notice it more that we walk around thinking we're the only one who is facing challenges. You know, we think everybody else's life is so perfect. And yet the reality of it is, if you become mindful of what's happening around you, we're going to see that we're all struggling with challenges. Yeah. And, you know, social media sites like Facebook and so on, you know, it started that whole concept of um, kind of watching being a voyeur and watching other people's so-called perfect lives. And then you find out if or if you know that people, you know, they're dealing with a sick child or, you know, some other um, real huge challenge. And, um, you know, for whatever reason, that triggers a lot. I think in, in our minds and right. it, it makes it harder and harder to, to recognize that um, as my husband used to say, we're all muddling through life the best we know how. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm noticing it more and more as we do these podcasts and some of the others is that, you know, um, I wasted, I feel like I wasted so much of my life trying to be perfect like everybody else only to find out that we're all imperfect and that's okay. The only one upholding the standard, right? Right, right. (laughs) So how are you going to help us understand tolerating versus embracing? So think of the word tolerating, what what shows up in your body when you think of that term or think of an instance where you acknowledged or recognized on some level that you were tolerating. Um. When I tolerate something, I'm really tense about it. Uh, I'm tolerating it because I don't want to either create an argument. I don't want to try to find another way out of it. I'm just going to accept it the way it is. Um, And yet part of my body will um, have some sort of painful effect on me. Yeah. So, you know, in a sense, the body knows and it, you know, you're, you're kind of forcing this um, mindset on the situation and the more insidious kind of tolerating is the stuff we don't even recognize that we're doing it. Um, I call it delegating up. So how often it is that people will not do something that they said they were going to do or not do it well. And then sometimes we feel like we need to uh, jump in and um, take it back on our plates. And um, it, it without being able to say, what? Yeah. You know, you, you said you were going to do this. And or think about embracing, um, otherwise known as acceptance and so on. How does that feel in the body? Um, it, it, it's almost, it can almost be joyful um, that, you know, I'm just going to take this on. I'm going to do the best that I can. And, and you know, that's, that's okay. Um, you know, I did this and it's funny because I didn't know we were exactly going to be talking about this yesterday, but, um, my younger son called me and he wanted to share a challenge with me that he's going through. And I just said, oh, I'm, I'll help you with that. Because part of me knew that I knew how to help him with that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And I could do it from a distance. And by, as we say, embracing it, um, I, I could hear that he was relieved. And I was relieved that it wasn't going to, you know, turn into World War Three for him. And, you know, I think sometimes I jump in, like you said, and just do it just because, you know, it needs to get done. But in this case was, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to help you do it. And that felt good. Yeah. So embracing uh, connotes um, choice, whereas tolerating 
connotes possibly not having a choice or feeling resigned to the situation. And and this is making the distinction between tolerating and being, um, you know, a woke society and so on, to, you know, to invoke that um, trope, that we do want a certain level of tolerance for different ideas and behaviors, but it's when we're we're not consciously or even unconsciously doing it on our own um of our own volition so any particular instance where that occurred recently that you can think of um not exactly i guess i'm feeling so good about things right now that uh i don't know good 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 well and that's a good sign so for me it does have to do with um well, many of my day job clients mm -hmm. where they are sometimes coming across as helpless. And my past MO was to jump in and be the helper and the, you know, not the savior. I, that has a little grandiosity to it that I don't think was part of it. But it it felt like I needed to do it. And I was not putting boundaries on it. And I had a recent episode where... um there's a lot of infighting in this one family. And I said, I originally to myself and to my assistant, I, I don't want those cases. That's, that's not what I want to do. I've done that, et cetera. And this is not a fixable thing. All right. But mm -hmm. I was tolerating it in its early iteration. And then more recently, I was more abundantly clear about this is the scope of what I'm doing. Anything outside of that is something y'all will have to work out. And I can give you some resources for you to follow up on, but I'm not taking on responsibility. It's it's not technically within my bandwidth to do that. Um, although I know I have been successful in the past with those things. So I'm trying to skirt around, you know, client confidentiality issues. But does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, as I heard you giving that scenario, it's, and I think we've talked about this in the past, that when something comes about, um, and I assume that I'm the one who should take care of it, mm -hmm. um, I often find myself feeling really upset and angry, and uh, I take it out on others around me, uh, especially my husband. Um, and then I don't real think to myself, why am I doing something that number one, I don't want to do. And also something that really is not my responsibility. <laughs> um, but, you know, through a lot of the training that I've been through, I now realize that I was doing that because I wanted to please people. But learning that when it doesn't please me, you know, it makes my migraines worse it may be what's causing this neck and shoulder pain and like so let's stop doing those things there's enough exactly. things that we have to do that are gonna upset us but i don't have to take on extra well and it's just a perfect example because um there's a sense of obligation a sense of enduring something that you don't really want to do you know you have the skill to do it but there's that resignation element to it. it's a whole different energy and and maybe even resentment in doing it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And and you know, that's releasing a lot of stress chemicals in the body, which has its own impact and so on. So how would you turn that into embracing? Um so it's really um being aware of what I'm comfortable to do and not do and i can for the things that i don't want to do um you know maybe i can help find a solution for that person to do it on their own or to um find somebody else but not in a way of you know hey i don't want to talk to you i don't want to do that mm -hmm. for you um it's the setting of the boundaries and letting them understand, you know, this is 
this is what I can do. Anything beyond that, at least at this moment, I can't. Yeah, I had a woman call me. I think this probably goes back six or seven months. And she was in a nursing facility and she wanted me to, um, I guess somebody was initiating the guardianship process and she sounded terribly cogent, um, you know, like she had her wits about her. And she did not want a guardianship. And she really felt like she was being victimized by these other people making all the decisions in her life. And she kept begging me. I forget how she got my name, but she kept begging me, oh, please, please, please. And I'll, it was just pulling at my heartstrings. And it's something I've done before. Like, you know, my policy is that if the doctor supports the position, then I'll advocate for that position. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to take a, you know, try to um, avoid guardianship if you need it. All right. Right. So, um, but I, I kept saying to her, I'm not the person that can do this for you. It's, you know, we, you would be better served by somebody else. That was, a, it sounds egotistical and I don't mean it that way, but it was hard for me to be un, what I consider unkind and denying somebody something that I can easily do. But that, that to me is my Achilles um, tendon or heel, whatever that is. And one of the body parts. So. I have to guard against it. And um, so the idea with the toleration, it has some element of stuffing it. So we're not talking about, you know, be tolerant of, you know, other religious views or, you know, whatever. And um, first of all, just noticing which, what it is, because how often do we just automatically go down that path and we don't even notice a couple of forks in the road? Right. All right. And so one of the ways to recognize it is to one feel it in the body different energy and two recognize the situations where we're the most vulnerable well right? and, and i think many of us get caught up in tolerating things because we either see it as you know if i don't tolerate this then uh I'm not going to either be noticed or uh, earn the money I need to earn. There's always like that gotcha. Mm -hmm. At least we think there is. Um, you know, as I've talked about my past job in corporate America, I loved what I was doing, hated the culture. And when I realized how long it took me, I mean, I tolerated it day in and day out. And when I finally was out of there, I thought to myself, you know, I've been feeling sick for like the last four years mm -hmm. and I don't feel the, you know, all those pains anymore. Like how did they just go away? And that's when I realized, you know, I, I couldn't embrace the situation because there were too many things that were hurting me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tolerating it actually was making me ill. Yeah. And Dr. Vanderkolk's book, The Body Keeps the Score, you know, there's his evidence um, behind that because we're either releasing stress chemicals or feel good chemicals. I mean, maybe there's a little neutral in there, but, um, you know, the Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about the biology of belief and how it can turn on certain gene expression or turn it off. And so there's real science behind it does literally physically take a toll. Um, not to even mention our, our mindset. So the idea with tolerance is to be aware of it and to recognize those areas where we're most vulnerable. We can set up some benchmarks. So for instance, um, in my day job, um, I, I have to vet the, the cases that are not clear cut within our scope with my assistant. And she's the, the gatekeeper on it. She'll remind me. She's like my guardrails. She'll remind me, no, no, no. You know, <laughs> yeah, we can do this technically, but it's not really within our bandwidth. Um, and I need that. You know, here I am an adult. You know, I'm a reasonably competent adult. And um, I can tell people what to do, um, but sometimes not for myself. So anyway. That's, that's unusual. But, you know, you mentioned you know, your assistant and that assistant could change in different areas of your mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. you know, she helps you in your work role, 
but we may have somebody that helps us, you know, in our family life role, or mm -hmm. uh, if we're a volunteer someplace. And it's not that we're asking people to control us. We're asking people to, you know, help us control ourselves. Yeah, to hold the mirror up so we can see for ourselves, you know, what we're accepting and and um, what we're uh, tolerating. Exactly. So, so tolerating has an element of stuffing it. And and just to kind of belabor the point a bit, um, there was a time when, you know, we had all sorts of technology issues that just seemed to be ongoing and not easily remedied. And a, a few other things occurred. And I realized how much I was tolerating. And in fact, I took on the habit for a quarter of intolerance. And I told, I came home one day and because every quarter I would take on a new habit. And I went home one day and told my husband and I said, I'm, I figured out what I'm going to, what habit I'm going to take on this quarter. And he goes, oh, wonderful, dear, wonderful. And um, I said, well, I'm going to practice intolerance. He said, wonderful, dear, wonderful. And I realized he didn't quite hear me. And I said, no, no, not tolerance because I can be impatient. Um, he wanted, he, he um thought I was saying I was going to be more patient. And I said, no, intolerance. And then he kind of shrunk back for me, like cringed, like I was going to be a really <laughs> nasty person or something. I said, no, no, no. I'm just going to notice all of the places where I tolerate. And, you know, I know it's happening. I feel that little internal, you know, yeah. like, oh, I don't want to do this. And I was just running through that stop sign, wasn't paying, you know, real attention, not in adhering to it and so on and it was amazing in that quarter all of the things that I was able to recognize big things little things I mean um there was something in my car that um wasn't like the seat belt kept having I had a hard time pulling it to to yep. put it in etc and you know each time it would be a little internal girl um and then finally I figured out what was wrong with it and I got it remedied all right silly stuff in in many ways but um the idea is just you know paying attention to it but embracing accepting is a little harder because it it can be a slippery slope and um so the idea it, there is it's behind it is paying attention to it is to not be railing against things as if it's going to be different so there are a couple of people in my life that I keep expecting them to be different and, you know, they show up the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go figure that. <laughs> and finally, when I just kind of let go and said, I have no, I can't control that person. I wasn't intending to control the person. I was just intending to protect myself from their um, habit, habitual ways of being. Um, a greater ease came into the equation, into the interaction. So learning to surf the emotions and recognize what things are self-sabotaging for us and which ones are, um, you know, more beneficial. And, you know, close friends and family, um, sometimes we, you know, do tolerate them to a point that um, we jump over and we're intolerant and then we look like the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that I, you, my, I have two older brothers and, um, the middle brother, it's funny. He would, I, I kept saying to myself, I love him. I love him. I love him. And then I would get things from him and it would just aggravate me, but I didn't want to tell him. So I tolerated all this stuff. And then Finally, we were together somewhere and I just said, I just have to tell you, you know, I don't like when you, and I very methodically listed the things that were really making me ill. And he looked at me and he goes, I didn't know I did that to you. And sometimes just being able to have that conversation, um, and it's not that he doesn't do it anymore, but he does it differently. And I've accepted it. It doesn't bother me like it had in the past. So sometimes it takes a conversation and those can be difficult. Well, and, and what you just 
um, mentioned really opens up the idea also that you took it from toleration, meaning that you were stuffing it, not saying anything. Right. Um, and, and basically being the un, um, desired recipient of whatever. Right. Okay. Like get no choice in the matter. And then you switched it to something where you did say what you wanted. And as you said, it, his behavior isn't, you know, pristine. It's, 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 he, it's not like he's eliminated it entirely, right. but you switched it to something where you had choice and you had a voice. Right. And I imagine the energy was entirely different. Oh, absolutely. And sometimes when I hear that dialogue coming from him, um, I just close it off. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, that's how he talks. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's something, you know, where we have control and where we don't have control and, right. you know, all sorts of things where we can bring that to um, bear in the conversation and so on. So why are these important? These distinctions important? What do you think? Well, personally, it's important to me because when I embrace something, I'm not, um, I don't have the angst that I had if I was just tolerating it. I mean, you can only put stuff your, you know, body with so much stuff before it starts to hurt. You got to eliminate it. Yep. 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 And um, we're going to feel stress either way, whether we're tolerating or um, resisting, embracing. Right. So, um, but it also broadens our field of vision when we embrace it. I'm not advocating for embracing everything. I, I want to be really clear about that. I think it's as important to notice what we're tolerating just so we can notice those forks in the road, the choices that we're making and how much we're just conceding to the situation, almost being victimized by it. But I think it's also important to be very aware of what we have control over. Um, Byron Katie, um, who is the um, founder of the concept of the work, says, there's um, your work, or whose business is it, is the question. So um, there's your work, there's others' work, and there's God's work for lack of or spirit or you know circumstances or something. But the idea is stop railing against the stuff that's outside of our control. Do the stuff we can control without being controlling and um, have a sense of more direction in our lives. So being able to have a wider uh, field of vision in terms of what some of those options are, rather than just the two forks. Absolutely. But we shouldn't be afraid of taking the fork in the road, because if it's not right, there's another fork coming up as well. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Very wisely said. (laughs) Well, so today's message is tolerating versus embracing challenges. And uh, I think that's good for a Monday. So I'm hoping uh, our listeners uh, hear all this today to make their week maybe a calmer, happier week for them. Let's hope. Let's hope. All right. We'll do this again in two weeks. Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, Karen. Bye-bye.